Hello viewers, welcome to the special segment and today I am going to present you one special person. In fact, I am proudly presenting you that special person because her story itself is an inspiration to many young entrepreneurs who just wanted to enter the industry. She is the first entrant, a woman entrant into the oil, steel and gas sector in the, in, in the country. And then I will be presenting you what exactly her challenges she faced in her life to become and to reach that successful level. Hello, Ms. Asminu Jindal. Uh, welcome to our show. Thanks for accepting this uh, invitation to be a part of this show. My first question itself is, women entrepreneurs itself is a big challenge in India. In fact, uh, but when for you it is on a plateau, you have your family business to come in, but still it is one of the biggest challenges. Uh, as a woman entrepreneur in this patriarchal uh, society in India, what exactly are the challenges you've been facing and how, how did you tackle them? Uh, you're absolutely right, Venkat. We do live in a society which does make women's job a little bit more tough. Uh, tough as an entrant in the business itself to begin with and uh, the other aspect that makes it tough is you're still a woman so you're expected to do all the womanly True. duties in spite of being busy at work and uh, women are supposed to not be aggressive um, have you had any other man tell about another man that the person is too aggressive but you'd hear that about women entrepreneurs once in a while that she's too aggressive that's interesting actually and then and then you know uh, you know coming back to your uh, the, this wheelchair thing i'll have to this is one important uh, thing uh, you know in my interview itself i'll just have to come back on to that as well but before that women steel pipes Women in hardware basically are oxymoron and how do you analyze this space? You, you know, this is completely correct <laughs> because people think that these are very macho businesses. Absolutely. What's a petite woman going to do in it? But, you know, I'm going to manage people. I'm not here to pick up pipes. I'm here to manage people that pick up pipes. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so basically, it's the man, men who are actually working there on the hardware sector, but you're managing those people. Machines are wonderful, but the capacity is always driven by people. Coming back to your uh, this this story over here, many people, uh, you know, when they heard, I was even I was explaining about this to my colleagues as well. People said used a word called tragic, and then I thought, okay, this is not a tragic story. As rather, I would rather say it's it's something it, that was a stepping stone for some success story. I would rather would rather term it in that way. I just wanted my viewers to know what exactly happened and then how did you actually come out of that and then you know being you know sitting here as a successful entrepreneur. Uh, I believe Venkat that when God gives you a problem he's actually giving you an opportunity. It's how you take it. Um, I'd met with a car accident when I was 11 and I was too young at that time to actually decide my life for myself you know. Um, I needed a lot of support and I did go through my low periods where I felt I was useless and I couldn't do anything and you know that's the time your family actually comes to your rescue they are your superman and uh, I believe you have more than one superman in your life many supermen in your life and women <laughs> lots of super women too and uh, one just has to be brave and take this as an opportunity. I think if I didn't meet with an accident, possibly my resolve wouldn't have been so much stronger to succeed in my professional life. And uh, I just hope nobody else has to go through this amount of pain to reach success because going out, being out there, being able to live everyday life is something which is your birthright. Nobody has the right to take it away. So. That's how we started to start thinking and working with the government to make public infrastructure accessible. For me, if anything is accessible in terms of transport, in terms of buildings, in terms of roads, initially is actually giving hope and a smile for a person. And uh, it's very important to have empathetic people who still believe that you can. And uh, I think somewhere deep down you need to have the spirit that no, you're going to do this. Absolutely, that's in, that's in fact very. I mean, a great thing, a message to the people. In fact, not just not just to the person, people who are differently able for everyone and for every individual as well. And then coming to your, I mean, rather the your favorite and even my favorite for you know, something to it's pretty much close to your heart as well as why I'm uh, the organization which is actually working. How did you get this idea initially, and then how? What exactly you know? What is the journey you know so far? Uh, when I met with my accident, 
I had gone through my ups and downs in life. I had seen people up close. Um, I wanted to stay in my safe zone. I didn't want to leave my house and go. But I went to school and I went to college. I went to a quiet college. Uh, you know, when you get exposed to a lot of people, then you start thinking, then why is it that government does nothing for these people? What is it that is happening in the world? And then somebody came and shared some stuff with me that government does a lot for these people. There are reservations, there are this, there are that. So I'm like, okay, how do they reach the college reservation if they're not able to get school education? Because none of the schools are accessible, you know. So we had started working earlier as uh, we started in 2001. We started talking to ministries. We started talking to government people. It seemed uh, you'd be surprised that the government was very keen on, uh, you know, sort of going ahead with these projects. Problem was execution. So the engineers that were seeing the projects, they had to be sensitized. The guy who were making it, they had to be told why they should make it. You know, when we talk about the Japanese concept, the 5S, all those things, Kaizen and stuff like that, the first thing they want to do is make the lowest, most worker in your, fa in your factory be able to answer questions of what the top management wants. Why is it that they are rolling it the way they are rolling it? Only then one can achieve quality. Similar concepts even are there in regular everyday life. So when we sensitize those engineers, when we help government come down to a universal design, they adopted it. They are the ones who executed it. But we were there to make sure the execution went well. That public money once spent was actually spent well. That's what Swayam does. Okay. It helps government make infrastructure accessible, especially modes of transportation. That is when people get equal opportunities to come to work. The person can't go to school. The person can't catch a bus and go to college. person can't uh, take a taxi and go to work. <laughs> You know, all these things in terms of even crossing a road, it's full of danger Absolutely. with the amount of accident rates one has. And uh, most importantly, when somebody goes and fights a war, you know, um, I was seeing a program which really touched me. Uh, I like to share about it because very few of us really appreciate. Uh, the soldiers say it was better that I died in the war yes. rather than come back injured which was so heartbreaking to actually hear. They were there fighting for your country, you know, fighting for not themselves alone, you know, for their own country and they were injured. So what they did was they just kept them in a corner and moved on with life. Uh, how about giving them a smile, a hope that you're still welcome as a big, huge part of the society. Um, improving walking conditions in India is also going to help reduce obesity and carbon footprint. <laughs> so all these things, I think if lots of youngsters join in this movement, this would create a sea change. This is where I see hope in future uh, for India, if its citizens are more sensitized towards this. Absolutely. Even even after watching this interview, people might get that idea, should get that idea, and then people who don't have as of now and then should come in and do that. And finally, this is a generation where youngsters are actually looking forward to set up, to come into the industry and enter and, you know, being an entrepreneur, start their own firms. As an entrepreneur, as a successful entrepreneur, what exactly is the message you want to give to these youngsters who want to enter into this industry and face this tough competition now? Why don't youngsters do what they want to? Why are they doing things just because their parents are forcing them, peers are forcing them, other people are forcing them. Why can't they do what they really want? Absolutely. In today's time and world, it's completely changed. You can be a media professional and be equally successful. You don't have to be really uh, business people. Entrepreneurs are primarily business people, but actually we're looking at leaders, future leaders. And you can be a leader in any field you want. You can be a leader by providing humane services. That's a huge industry. Service industry is a big industry. You know the tax we give for services nowadays? I think it's worthy of mention in terms of being entrepreneurial in that direction. Entrepreneur means you think out of the box. And then 
when you think out of the box keeping all the people all the stakeholders the whole populations we contribute majorly to the gdp of our country that's Makes great absolutely <laughs> on that note i think we'll be concluding my show because you think out of the box and then you will be successful and that will be contribution to the growth of the indian economy as well so that is minu jindal one inspiring story for the youngsters and for all the people in the country and across the world thank you for watching this